jam packed Fenway Park awaiting the start of game five and the ceremonial first pitch thrown out by Ted Williams a familiar number nine for anyone who ever saw him. He came here to Boston in 1939 called it a career in 1960 a lifetime batting average of 344. It just wouldn't be right to have a World Series game here without seeing the kid. Oh brother he still looks pretty good. It was 1969 when he was named to the starting outfield of the greatest living team and we're delighted to have him here with us. We have a chance now to take a look at the starting lineup. As you see Wade Boggs and Bill Buckner looking over towards Ted Williams. The visiting Mets who are trying to keep the road show a winner opening up their act in Boston and preparing to bring it back to Broadway. Remember all four games in this World Series won by the visiting team. The Sox won the first two games at Shea Stadium and then the Mets returned the favor in the first two here at Fenway Park. For the New York Mets Len Dykstra will be leading off in center field. The decision for Davey Johnson do I stay with the inspirational Wally Backman or do I go with the right hand hitting second baseman Tim Tuffle. The answer was easy he goes with Tuffle all year long he goes with him tonight. Keith Hernandez at first Gary Carter behind the plate Darryl Strawberry in right Ray Knight at third the designated hitter Kevin Mitchell the left fielder Mookie Wilson and the shortstop Rafael Santana. And of course the pitcher Dwight Gooden. The defense well the lineup is exactly the one he's been using Rice in the left field Henderson in center field Arma still hurt Evans in right field Boggs Owen Barrett and what a series Barrett is having Buckner at first base Gedman behind the plate and Bruce Hurst on the mound. Bruce Hurst the 28 year old left hander from Utah with a record of 13 and 8. But he had four shutouts here at Fenway Park and he was eight and three at Fenway with seven complete games. He is two and oh in postseason play one in the league championship series one in the World Series with an earned run average of one and a half. So he becomes a most formidable foe in game five. He's got a great fork ball. He's a strikeout pitcher as indicated by in fact uh, for a while there he was way past Clemens until he got hurt a good fastball curveball the fourth ball we saw him against Toronto this on a game of the week he really looked tough and he's got a good move so that'll be I think a factor Vin trying to hold these base runners on because I think you got to believe that Dykstra and Tuffle are going to try to get on and get the big guys going because Dykstra has been some story in this series. It'll be interesting indeed. 39 pickoffs in the last four years. So it'll be Len Dykstra, then Tim Tuffle and Keith Hernandez. And we're about ready to go in game five. A light shower visited Fenway, moved out, and it looks like we're ready. Dykstra with a home run last night and led off the game against Oil Can Boyd with a home run. He had three leadoff home runs this year. in on the grass and here we go right and he starts him right off with the curveball with all the talk about Buckner's legs and Barrett really breaking in from second base they still not have the Mets have not been able to punt no balls in one strike to Lenny the outfield about straight away and that's fouled off third carrying upstairs The breeze tonight is blowing from left to right and it has straightened out old glory in that area. So that'll shorten up that 380 area in right field for the left hand hitters who can pull. Just off the corner with that showcase fastball one and two.
came off with the curveball, threw a fastball with two strikes on him, fastball outside, and a big overhand curveball. He took something off that pitch. So he's already in just the first at bat, uh, first batter, showing him he's got pretty good control of his stuff. One change in the Mets lineup in Game One when Bruce Hurst pitched against the Mets, Tim Tuple was batting seven. Tonight against Hurst, he is batting second. He had two hits against Hurst in game one. Ball one. And of course, it was Tuffle's error that allowed the only run of the game to score. And now a chance to tell his side. Good fastball. A lot of motion on that one. When they talk about him, they say that. Pitchers like to go to one particular pitch when they get in trouble. Not this fella. He's got a couple of them. One and one to Tuffle. There it was. At what he calls it a fork ball, but the term of the 80s is a split finger fastball. And Tuffle a little bit out in front of it. That was the difference between the regular fastball and the fork ball. One and two the count. Hernandez. Two and two. He likes to get on one knee, he says, especially when the left-hander's pitching. When he's in the on-deck circle next, he's bearing down. And that's hit in the right center field, base hit, and it will roll towards the bullpen. Jim Rice allowing Henderson, and Henderson will get it back in, but it's a double for Tuffle. So Tim Tuffle with a long double to right center field, and that would be his third hit against Bruce Hurst. Just simply goes with the pitch. You see in the outside part of the plate, and Davey Johnson using the lineup that got him here puts Tuffle in there, and he's in scoring position, and Hernandez up there. So by the time Henderson got it in, no play at second base, and Keith Hernandez the batter. Hernandez went 0 for 3 against Hurst and did walk once in their previous meeting. Off speed just slipped it in there. A big curveball. Oh and one to counter key. Marty Barrett can't do anything about Tuffle. He's playing on the edge of the infield, way over to the right. So the job to hold the runner is for Spike Owen. You're really not bird dogging him too much at that. They're just both holding their positions. Barrett way over there protecting that hole on the right side. He didn't like it at all. Hernandez thought that pitch was inside. By the way, with Bruce Hurst pitching, the plate umpire is from the National League, Ed Montague. Then you have Dale Ford, John Kibler, and Jim Evans on the base pad. Harry Wendelstedt down the left field line. Joe Brinkman down the right field line. One and two. Two balls, two strikes. Jim Evans saying no swing. He joined us a little late. Dykstra grounded out. Tuffle doubled to right center. And Hernandez the batter two and two. Three and two. And of course on deck is the man who had the big night last night. Gary Carter. Carter with two home runs and a double. And three RBIs. Waiting for a shot. It's a big pitch because he could work on Carter if he gets Hernandez out of the way with Strawberry following Carter. Three and two. And a ground ball to the right side to Barrett, who plugs up a hole. He has to wait for Buckner because Buckner on those bad wheels took so long to get to the bag. Couple advancing to third. And here comes Carter. 
Buckner going in to say something to Hurst. It's not a situation where you would walk him intentionally, but it's it's certainly a situation where you impress upon him. Hey, in the meeting we said the pitch we don't want him to hit is, and I would assume that's the fastball. So Strawberry's up next. He's the guy. So let's see what happens. If you notice the seven RBIs for Gary Carter. That's the most RBIs for a National League player in the World Series since 82 when Keith Hernandez had eight RBIs. Off speed, ball one. Uh, I think if he sees a fastball, uh, then it'll be to push him back or outside. He certainly should not get a fastball he can handle. Carter went one for four with a base hit. On deck is Darrell Strawberry, who struck out twice and walked twice against Bruce Hurst. Carter, by the way, has hit in six straight games. Fastball. He didn't get around on it. A little roll to the Barrett, and Marty gets it. So he was late on the fastball, and he leaves Tuffle at third. The Mets fail to score in the first inning. Here's how the Red Sox stack up. Wade Boggs leading off at third base. Marty Barrett, who has hit in all four series games at second. Bill Buckner at first. Jim Rice in the cleanup spot in left. Don Baylor, the DH. Dwight Evans in right field. Rich Gedman behind the plate. Dave Henderson in center field. And Spike Owen at short. On the mound, Dwight Gooden. With a record of 17 and 6. In being careful about him, remember he's coming back on three days rest for the first time in his career. Defensively, Mookie Wilson, who just seemed to have uh, all kinds of fun out there last night, he really enjoyed it. Dykstra in center, Strawberry in right. It's night, Santana, Tuffle, and Hernandez. Carter behind the plate, and Gooden against Wade Boggs, who's been having a little bit of a tough time. Dwight Gooden, 21 years old. And Davey Johnson said, you have to protect these young arms, but I don't mind pitching him on three days rest because in his previous outing, in five innings, he made 90 pitches. So they thought they could bring him back tonight. You saw him ask the umpire if it was okay to blow into his hands. I, I'm not for sure he got permission. And Montague, without a jacket, Ben, you must think it's plenty warm out here. Well, we'll see about Wade Bonds putting on some heat. Ball one, one and all. It's nice to have Ted Williams watching with another great hitter at the plate in Wade Boggs. Ted, of course, never had a 200 hit season. Boggs has done it four straight years. Right, one and one. A high fastball. That's the pitch he has to lay off. One ball, one strike. Fouled away, one and two. The Mets have a very tough mountain to climb tonight. One of the strengths of the Red Sox, the fact that they were not swept at home. They were not the victims of a three game sweep by one team in Fenway until the division was clinched. And then the Yankees swept the series. And the Mets trying to do it tonight. One and two. hit in all four. Boggs going 0 for 5 last night. So he's now 0 for 7 as he goes back into the dugout. Interesting the flip flop of Marty Barrett and Wade Boggs during the regular year and it really benefited both men. However in the series Barrett as you can see is hitting 412. You know what Boggs is hitting? 167. Ball one. Two and 0. 
He has not let up on a pitch yet. Just hard fastball, hard curve. If you're wondering about his speed, it's in about the middle 90s. 94 was one that we clocked. Some people said he let up on his fastball to get over for strikes, but I'll tell you something. It's the movement on the ball that was lacking in some of his games. 2 0. Oh. Tell you one thing, he looks like he's going a little harder than he was the other night at Che. He looks looser, and of course, he's got such great rhythm. He, he uses his entire body, pushes off those legs, very fluid in his delivery, and he does that disturbing thing of looking away from the hitter in the middle of his windup. When you throw that hard, that can be a bit scary. Two balls, one strike. There's a breaking ball over for a strike. Two and two. I would think when he lets up on that curveball, you jump out of your car to hit it because he throws that good curveball so hard. Now watch him when he looks and delivers. He'll, he'll take his eye off the target twice in his delivery. Three and two. And he went back to the heat. On deck, Bill Buckner. And if anybody gets on, Jim Rice. Two to Marty Barrett, one out in the first inning, no score. Very high. So Gooden walking Barrett with one out. Now he has Buckner and Rice coming up. Buckner, Rice, and Evans have had a tough series hitting with men in scoring position. Buckner right now is just trying to get started, as you can see, hitting under 200. This is one of the few situations where they could start somebody at first base. Red Sox certainly not known for their speed, but they might start Barrett with Buckner's bad legs. Ball one. Barrett led the club in stolen bases with a modest 15. While Buckner was second in the major leagues in grounding into double plays. So Buck checking with Rene Latchman. He gave him one sign, and when you back out of the batter's box, that's telling the coach, hey, I didn't get it. Give it to me again, which he did. One ball, no strikes. And he's got it bad. Yep, he picked him off. Shot him down and hung him out to dry, and that'll do it for Marty. You can see him start to go. And Gooden, who's really worked on his pickoff move, and a quick one and a quick tag, and they get him. They used to say Gooden can't hold anybody on, and the joke always was when nobody ever got on. Uh, I remember Sandy Koufax talking about him then. He said he has a great ability for keeping runners off base. One ball and no strikes to Bill Buckner, who whacks it up the middle for the base hit. So that was a very big pickoff play for Dwight Gooden. So two down, a runner at first, and now Jim Rice, the batter. Here's that pickoff. He about took himself one full step, and Gooden with a good, quick throw. They get him. Now it's Rice. The first, the first time they hooked up against each other. Gooden struck Rice out. Later on during the game, Rice had himself a three hit game. Breaking ball for a strike, and you can see Rice kind of give on it, taking all the way. On one. I guess everybody in the world knows that Rice is a first ball, fastball hitter. He should have had the third out. Tim Tuffle had plenty of time with a sore legged Buckner coming down, and he couldn't make the play. It hits right off the mound. It looks like it's going to get by, but hitting the mound, it slows down, and you can see. Tough a little bit off balance. Had plenty of time. Here comes Buckner now, and that'll be an error. No. The word is they're giving a hit. We get. Let's double check on that. They 
splashed hit in one place and they put error on the scoreboard. And we will assume it's an error unless we hear otherwise. I mean, he would have had Buckner by plenty. All right, the first big break was the pickoff. The second, the bad play by Tuffle, and now let's see. Baylor fouls it away. 0 and 1. They're really playing Baylor to pull that ball. Once again, Santana is over in the hole. As you can see, look how close he is to third baseman Knight. Mookie is over near the line. Baylor is strong enough to be able to pull that ball, but I tell you, he, he's got a real challenge against Gooden if he gets that ball outside and tries to pull it. It could be the ground ball that they're looking for. Last night, the Sox had the bases loaded in the first inning and failed to score. By the way, they have now taken the error down off the scoreboard, and they are going to give Jim Rice a base hit. So a walk and two singles, but two out, two on. Buckner, a tough man to score on a base hit at second, and Rice at first. 0 and 2 to Bailey. Curve, half swing. No swing, says Dale Ford. He is really emphatic when he calls him. You remember the other night at third base, he really gave him a big call. In retrospect, over the four games plus tonight, there has not been one appeal that has been granted in the series. And not really any beefs as far as the umpires. They're really doing a super job. One and two, the count to Baylor. Barrett picked off after the walk. Buckner's single. Rice a scratch single. And here is Baylor with two out. One and two. Tuffle playing him up the middle. Curveball hit foul. It's pretty apparent that they're going to try to get Baylor. Out without showing him or giving him a fastball to hit. All breaking balls so far. And of course, the more he throws it, the more that puts the thought in Baylor's mind when is he going to throw it to me? For John McNamara, he knows full well the Sox left 11 men on base last night. And he's faced with that problem here two on and two out in the first inning. One ball, two strikes. at that record he says well it's not the kind of a record that I used to dream about as a youngster <laughs> it really drills him but he's right on top of the plate and you can see that ball boring in and look at uh, Gary Carter kind of almost ducking it that fastball just kept coming in well you talk about opportunity coming around twice last night Dwight Evans came up with two out in the first inning and the base is loaded and hit into a force play and here he is with the same opportunity tonight. Curveball, ball one. Mel Stoudemire felt that uh, Gooden wasn't using his curveball enough as we look at Davey Johnson and McNamara, but Gooden is certainly using it tonight. One ball and no strikes. Buckner at third, Rice at second, Baylor at first, two out. And another curve for a strike. One and one. Darling got Evans out in the first inning on a breaking ball. In the first game, Darling threw the same pitch in the dirt. Last night he threw it and Evans rolled a short. But we'll see if Gooden tries to use him as an escape hatch again tonight. Here's Ron Darling basking in the glow of a big win last night. Bobby Ojeda charting the pitches. One ball, one strike. And as a high fly ball to left, Mookie has a play. And the Sox begin tonight on a sour note as they strand three. And for Marty Barrett, picked off in the first inning, and that was the killer tonight so far. At the end of an inning, no score. The Red 
Red Sox with two singles a hit batter and a walk failed to score because Marty Barrett was picked off first base. And I'm sure that's what he was talking about to the second base umpire. There it is. You can see he's caught leaning. They had a play on. And Gooden, you have to give him credit, really working on that. That was a weakness of his, but big one in tonight's game so far. So Daryl Strawberry, Ray Knight, and Kevin Mitchell in a big roundhouse curveball one, one and oh. ball strike one ball and one strike by the way the official scorers there are three of them for the World Series Red Foley of the New York Daily News Dave Nightingale of the Sporting News Charlie Scoggins of the Lowell Massachusetts Sun one and two the count is strawberry top of the second inning no score the Mets left a runner at third the Sox the bases loaded two and two Stairs, still two balls, two strikes. You can just imagine you look at Daryl Strawberry or Wade Boggs and you wonder the thoughts going through the mind of Ted Williams. Probably sitting there trying to figure out how he could hit mm -hmm. first and good. Two and two. Ground ball to first. Buckner on his knee will have to feed Hurst coming over. One away. Ted had such a magnificent career and it is so good indeed to see him. I mean what credentials player of the decade in the 50s Hall of Famer most valuable player twice led the league did everything and eventually got his name and number in the Red Sox history books forever hit 400 on the last day of the season. And how about that uh, little audio cut we had last day here when he hit the home run and said goodbye. Oh. Here's Ray Knight. One out, second inning, no score. Ball one, one and all. and no strikes to Ray on deck Kevin Mitchell the rookie who's the DH tonight that's an interesting thought the Sox won without the DH the Mets win with it so far it's been kind of backwards as to who's winning where you figure with Baylor a DH here in Fenway Park would be an edge for the Red Sox Mets come in and take two Pitchers hit in Shea Stadium for the Red Sox. They take two. Oh, is it Roger Millis wrote that song, King of the Road? <laughs> two and up. Bottom dropped out of that thing. Two balls and one strike to Ray Knight. That's the thing we're talking about. When he's in the jam, two balls and no strikes, he can go to any one of his pitches. He went to that fork ball that time. Certainly had him set up for that. Three and one. On the cool side tonight, so the pitchers again are allowed to blow on their hands. He misses, according to Montague, but he doesn't miss by much. Ray Knight walking over there. That's what he did to Ashby in the playoffs, and they got a little conversation about that. Three and one. High fly ball hooking down the left field line in the corner. And the wind trying to blow it back, but it's going to land in the stands. That breeze is blowing from left to right. So if you're the left fielder, it's a good idea not to quit on any ball hit down in the corner. That will be an influence. It's the first thing ball players check. Is that flag? Not to be patriotic, but which way is it blowing? <laughs> Three and two to Ray Knight. We're in the second, no score. Fastball, and he was a little late. Started him with a fork ball, just missed, and he's been battling three and two.
Mets left Tuffle at third in the first inning. The Sox left the bases loaded in the first. Now we have one out, top of the second, no score. Fastball hit to right. Evans has to go back a bit. Two down. I don't know if many outfielders had worked as hard as Evans. Before the game, he's out there by himself. He's got some kind of a drill with Coach Joe Morgan where he's in center field and Joe Morgan stands on the foul line and hits him line drives and short hops and he's just doing it and doing it and doing it. Well, here's Kevin Mitchell with two out in the second inning. The handyman for the Mets all year. Played six different positions for them. Batted in just about every spot in the order. And for good measure, the team barber. One ball, no strikes. Ball two. I'll tell you, but the way you cut your hair, he needs a hunting license. <laughs> well, he does a number on you. <laughs> Gives the kind of haircuts that I got naturally. Two and oh. and no strikes and Gedman going out. Daryl Strawberry was a most recent I don't know if I should say customer or victim of Kevin Mitchell. Victim would be better. You know one of the things Gedman said about Hurst he said once he tried not striking out everybody and kind of relaxed he became a better pitcher like he was just being too fine. Mitchell might be allowed to swing three and oh he has enough power to hit it out. I think I think he would call his pitches if you thought he was. Three and oh. Taking all the way. Three and one. Mookie Wilson on deck. And then Rafael Santana bats ninth. Ground ball back a third. Backhanded by Boggs and off the line. Throws him out. Good play. So the Mets are gone in order, and at the end of an inning and a half, no score. When he said goodbye in 1960, Ted Williams was just about 42. And he said goodbye only the way the great ones do, with a home run. It was his 29th home run of the year, the last he would ever hit, home run number 521. If you never saw him play, you really miss something. Is there a better name for a guy than Teddy Ballgame? That's his son, John Henry Williams, sitting just to his right. Okay, Rich Gedman, Dave Henderson, and Spike Owen. And a change, straight change, ball one. Getty, as they call him here. One ball and one strike to Rich Gedman. The two catchers, Carter, seven for 17, 412 with seven RBIs. Gedman, four, 17, 235, no RBIs. One ball, one strike. Fastball on the hands, a jam job to Santana. Oh, two changes in the express on the knuckles and a broken bat. He really gets that ball inside and he's got something on it. Look at that kick. Fluid delivery by Gooden. One away. And Henderson coming up. You might remember that Dwight Gooden is the only Mets pitcher to give up a home run in this series. And he gave up two of them to Dave Henderson and to Dwight Evans. Henderson, a fastball hitter. And he challenges him right away. Big numbers for Hindu. Oh and one. Check at first. No swing, says Dale Ford. One ball, one strike. We're in the bottom of the second. One out, base is empty. No score. Game five.
never seen a young pitcher uh, have as good a year as Gooden have and have so many people give theories as to why it was bad. And he himself knows when he talks about it, he said, I just pinched it a few times and I tried to overthrow. If I stay myself, I'll be okay. Two and two. It's incredible when you realize all the things he has accomplished. And he is 21 years old. The rookie of the year, the youngest pitcher ever to win the Cy Young Award. 21. You get right down to it. Billy Lowe's was right. You win 24 games. I expect you to do it every year. Two balls, two strikes. Fastball whacked into right center. Base hit. A late break for Strawberry, and he can't pick it up. Dykstra falls down. Henderson for three. He is in there. A double. Dykstra just slips and he can't come up with it. And that about the time that Henderson was at second base, and he shifted into what for him was high gear, and he goes into third base. Interesting now with Spike Owen at the plate. Keith Hernandez is up, Tim Tuffle is up, Knight is up, and Santana is halfway. But with one out in the second inning, Davy Johnson playing the infield out. It'll make Gooden feel any better, but the pitch that Henderson hit was a 97 mile an hour fastball. And dangling in the air is the question. So, if it doesn't move, you'll be backing up third. That's what the answer to that question is. McNamara, who saw three men stranded in the first inning, a runner at third with one out in the second. One and oh. Foul back. One and one to Spike. So Dave Henderson with Strawberry first not getting a jump to cut it off then missing the ball then Dykstra falling down easily running a double into a triple. A lot going on. Latchman talking to Henderson. Spike Owen backs out. Look at Gary Carter. Here's your game within the game. Take a little bit more extra time checking Latchman. Still not sure. One ball one strike is Spike Owen. Lifted to left field and should be deep enough. Let's see. Mookie for the catch. Henderson coming to Carter too late. They're going to run on Mookie Wilson's arm. You can see he was back there ready to go and it's not close at all. He would have a better chance if that ball would land on that grass, but his throw is off the target. Watch where it hits and how it dies. Just boom, like a big cantaloupe. So one to nothing, Red Sox, and the batter is Wade Bonds. Spike Owen, the little guy, picks up the big man from third. Strike. A lack of a play in right center field is cashed in by the Red Sox. thrown out by Gooden in the first inning. In there. Strike two. Well you had to be looking for something beside that fastball because that was right down the middle. Oh and two the counter Wade. Davy Johnson behind in the early going, one to nothing. John McNamara finally sees the Sox cash in a break. Oh, and 
two to Wade Barnes. Little roller to Keith Hernandez. Big hop, and he'll underhand it to Gooden. But the mix up in right center. Strawberry's lack of a jump. Strawberry's inability to come up with the ball. And Lenny Dykstra falling down. It's all cashed in for a Red Sox run. We'll be right back after these messages from your local station. Engineered like no other car in the world and by UPS for express delivery to Europe and throughout the United States. UPS runs the tightest ship in the shipping business. We go to the third. one nothing Red Sox. Mookie Wilson, Rafael Santana, and Len Dykstra. Right. So a couple of breaks. The Sox denied because Barrett was picked off in the first inning. And then Strawberry not seeing that line drive off the bat of Henderson. It goes for a triple instead of a double. And the Sox cash it in on a fly ball. Darrell and Len Dykstra had a little discussion when they got back to the dugout after the inning. High foul off to the right, out of play. Normally, when you come to a ball game, you're sitting in the stands and you see the ball hit. If you look and the outfielder is just starting to move, he didn't have a jump. Well, when Henderson hit the ball and we looked at Strawberry, he was dead in his tracks. He wasn't moving at all. Of course, the misnomer, too, is the crack of the bat. You have to move before you hear the crack of the bat. Uh, you've got a late jump. And how? Because the speed of light is a lot quicker than the speed of sound. Right. The Mookie. Muttering to himself. Strikeout number one for Bruce Hurst and Rafael Santana coming up. is telling Tim Tuffle to lead the on deck area. Remember last night we were talking about they could take a team picture in the batting circle. Not anymore. They just sent Tuffle back to the dugout. On the corner, two and one. Uh, Keith Hernandez was telling me they did that in the uh, championship series during the playoffs, but uh, they've been doing it all in the World Series. Nobody said a word. And they do it all year. Fastball, and he's behind now, three and one. Comes as kind of a shock. You don't think about it. This is the first time the home team has been ahead in the World Series, having the lead. So the walk to the number nine hitter, Santana, and Len Dykstra, who grounded out in the first inning, coming up. And Buckner wants another meeting with Hurst. Well, the Mets certainly can manufacture runs. Uh, that's what they did all year long. They're not waiting for the three-run homer, especially with guys like Dykstra in the batter's box and Santana on base. So, Hurst has a good move. Now, Buckner wants Gedman to come in on the conversation. Barrett is going to come in. They're going to set up a defense, obviously. By the way, Santana did not have a stolen base nor an attempt this year. With Dykstra up there, he can do so many things, Ben. I think the, the threat of the punt is the big thing. He's already pulled Boggs in. Now, if Buckner breaks in, uh, he, he breaks up the whole infield, and that's the important thing. One out, top of the third. Red Sox one. That's nothing. And he's going over. What he does with the good move, he'll hang you with that front leg. He'll get up midair and almost like a like a stork, he'll stand on the one leg and he make you almost commit yourself. Hurst has a good move. Johnson calls it a balk move. Breaking ball sends him scrambling in the dirt. Ball one. Hurst's picked off four men this year, eleven last year, and fifteen the year before that.
first again. So working carefully to Santana, he walked in, and now he's behind the Dykstra. Two balls and no strikes. Sox one, Mets nothing. Top of the third, one away. Big curveball for a strike. Brother, that's as good a big league pitch as you want to see. You've got a little guy like Dykstra up there who at 5'8 may be on his toes and he throws in that big breaking curveball. I mean, you talk about throwing something beside a fastball when you're behind. There's a major league pitch right there. Two and one. Fastball. A little dunker to center. Henderson coming up. It's going to land. Stopping at second is Santana. And the Mets are in business. First and second, one out, and Tim Tuffle coming up on a little flare to center by Lenny Dykstra. Dykstra gets a piece of the ball. He puts it in play. And I mean, some of them are beauties like the home runs, and then you get one like that, but when you put the bat on the ball, anything can happen. Tim Tuffle with a couple of hits against Hurst the first time around, and then a double in the first inning. Two on, one out in the third. The Mets trying to at least get even on deck. Keith Hernandez. Worked him high and away. Ball one. At second base, Rafael Santana. At first, Len Dykstra. One away. uses pretty much the whole ballpark so they're really straight away the tip off is Henderson in center field he's directly behind the bag so he's got him pretty well scattered out that was that split finger fastball there you see Henderson looking in line with the bag Tuffle doubled to right center in the first inning Again at first, no swing. Two balls and one strike. Dale Ford, he's calling everybody safe. The court of last appeal is not working. Doing one to Tuffle. line but remember the win it'll cut it down and Rice has a play I'll tell you though Vin he had that wall ball cut on that one he was not fooled he got under it so a lazy fly ball to left as the legs cut out from under it and now Keith Hernandez here's the swing you can see he gets right into it he just got under it and with that wind blowing there's no way it's going to be even close Hernandez grounded to second in the first inning. The first inning was very busy for Marty Barrett. He handled all three. So Keith 0 for 1. Santana at second. Dykstra at first. Two out in the third. One nothing Sox. Slow curveball for a strike. That's the way he started him the last time, and then he went to the fastball. Hernandez usually against a left-hand hitter. A left-hand pitcher, rather, will go the opposite way and kind of inside out it. Buckner is almost on the grass. Barrett is almost on the grass. The right side is about as deep as you can play a hitter. One and one. And of course, for Buckner, he's really at a disadvantage. Should Hernandez top a ball up along first base? We've had a couple of relatively close plays at first, only because Marty Barrett had to wait for Buckner to run to the bag to handle the throw. Well, that's deep. Fastball, and that's a fly ball to left, and Rice will have a play. And Hurst is out of the jam. The Mets lead two on a walk and a base hit. 
And at the end of two and a half, one nothing Boston. We're going to the bottom of the third, one to nothing Boston. Marty Barrett, Bill Buckner, and Jim Rice. This is an indication of the kind of a shot we can get. There is a camera on top of the roof down the left field line. And just to show you the perspective first of the camera towards home, we also have a cameraman high up on the left field wall. And we try to cover this thing like a blanket. We had George Loomis inside the scoreboard. We had more guys on the wall than the Red Sox. Big bouncer over the mound, tumble to his right, and throws back to get him. So Barrett grounding out, one away, and the batter will be Bill Buckner. First pitch that's kind of rare for Marty Barrett. He usually takes a few pitches. Works that count to three two hits the first one and you can see Tuffle brace himself so he could get extra on the throw. Bill Buckner is single to center in the first inning. <laughs> oh Buck's got a visit with everybody. Oh yes. Oh, <laughs> now. I used to like that when they did that, but what used to bug me is they started conversation and finish it when they crossed home mm -hmm. plate. Now that's not very nice. <laughs> one and oh to Buck. Sox one run, three hits. Mets no runs, two hits. We're in the third. In there. Buckner has made one change from the start of the series down at his feet. He's wearing a high top shoe on the left foot and the normal shoe on the right. He's got more tape than Seabiscuit. One and one. Ball two. Say with him it's certainly not to help his speed. He's just trying to find comfort. Stay away from the pain. It's funny though, it, when the series started, he said, I'll never play another game without the high tops. But for whatever reason, he switched tonight. Meanwhile, Gooden with the count two balls and one strike. Doesn't care what kind of shoes he's wearing. Check swing on a high change and a ground ball that's kicked at shortstop. Buckner no threat to advance. The so Buckner was fooled, checked his swing, and still reaches. And that will be a boot and an error charge to Santana. It looked like he just let the ball play him and it just ate him up. It wasn't hit that hard, and that's really a rare thing to see Santana just miss a ball that's really that easy. So a runner at first with one out. And Jim Rice the batter. You remember Rice hit the ball up the middle and Tuffle should have made a play to get a force on Buckner but he couldn't handle it and Rice was given a single. And after Rice comes Bailey. He overthrew that pitch and Carter just said easy easy just gestured to him. Well that's one of the things that uh, he, he himself realizes that uh, if, if I just stay within myself is the expression he uses but he kind of jumps at the uh, at the batter rice and you can see Carter just hey settle down you don't have to throw that hard when you do that you squeeze the ball and it, it's just not fluid. One and all to Jim. him to do any kind of running in there again Rice kind of bailing out on the breaking ball and the count one ball one strike he starts that curveball right at him and just snaps right in there Red Sox one run three hits Mets no runs two hits one error and you can see Hernandez dropping back off Buckner missed ball two and we still got him bailing out. You remember it was Rice who said in spring training facing good and he said it was one foul tip three more pitches and then grab some bench.
Two balls, one strike. All three. Off speed. Now, actually, he made a good off speed pitch to Buckner, but the error hurt him. And now he's in trouble against a fastball hitter, 3 1, and he has Baylor on deck. This will tell you something about what Gooden and Carter are thinking because is he going to go strength against strength or will he stay with that curveball? He has been getting it over pretty consistently. Three and one. Fastball, and he walked him. And he overthrew it. Gooden has walked to hit a batter. He's had an error back of him. Now he is just not fluid when he overthrows it. I mean, 94 is the speed, but he comes right into you. You can see he let that ball go high. Look where he fell when he finished up there. That's not like him. So Jim Rice goes to first. Buckner aboard on the error moves up a notch to second. And with one out, Don Baylor, who was hit by a pitch in the first inning, coming up. Baylor's right on top of that play. Tough man to pitch inside to. One thing goes with the other. He doesn't like the ball inside, so he stands over the plate, so he gets hit by the pitch. Breaking ball. Oh, and one. They're swung way around for Baylor as they have been the whole series and with Buckner at second base you look at the defense look how far Tuffle is Hernandez wide protecting the hole be a tough trip for Buckner to score on a single. Oh and one to count to Baylor. Tuffle kind of bird dogging at the bag and another breaking ball. So two curveballs to Baylor, the count 0 and 2, and time for a little conference. Well, he did that the last time, and I kind of believe that Gary is saying, hey, if you throw the fastball, maybe we should get it outside. I don't, you know, be one of, what is he going to do? Where does he want to spot that fastball if indeed he's going to throw it, or does he want to stay with that curveball? That's what Baylor's looking at. You can see him turn that ball over. Look at that rotation on that ball. Well, after a couple of good curveballs, would you stay with the curve? I would, yes, with him. But then again, Let's see what Carter does. I know one thing. I don't think I'd go that inside to get a chance of hitting him. 0 oh 2. Breaking ball got him swinging. So he got three curveballs to take care of Baylor. First At, strike. After seeing that, you got to believe that Gary went out there, Vin, and said, hey, look, let's not fool around with that fastball. Let's go out and get him right now. What's the difference if there's two strikes and no balls? Still that curveball. We're going to try to make him hit the curveball anyhow. Let's try to get him now. And they did. So two down, runners at first and second, and here is Dwight Evans who applied the left in the first inning. Rice at first, Buckner at second. One nothing Boston in the third. The Sox left three in the first inning, but picked a run up in the second on a defensive lapse in the outfield. He starts him with a breaking ball, so that means he's thrown four curves in a row. Well, we mentioned it earlier. Mel Stoudemire, the pitching coach, uh, he thinks that he should be throwing a lot more curveballs. And by golly, he is tonight, and so far he's been pretty effective. 0 and 1. Fastball, line drive, base hit, and that should be enough to get Buckner, but he's going to have to hurry. The throw is way. Gooden is very unlikely. 
unlucky. Strawberry should have made a better play in the second inning, and the Sox shouldn't have scored. And they would not have scored in the third if Santana fields a ground ball. But luck or no, the Red Sox two, and the Mets nothing. One and all. Fastball fouled away upstairs. If you've ever had a leg injury, just watch this picture and you can identify with it. So Billy Bucks gets the job done. Talking to Dave Stapleton about his circuitous route to home. The red badge of courage on his chest, and it's two to nothing, Boston. Well, he looks like a guy to make the All Star team with the Mash unit. Gedman popped a short in the second inning. Remember, he was jammed. He has Rice at second, Evans at first, two out, and a run in. Two and one. No one throwing in the Mets bullpen is no reason. Two on, two out. Two nothing Boston. Off speed, got it in there. Just from up here, Vin, if the manager would come out and ask you, say, what kind of stuff has he got? You'd have to say he's got great stuff. Oh, yeah. His fastball's jumping in there, his curveball is snapping off. And Davey knows what might have been, but instead he's face to face with the reality of what is. Two nothing Boston. So the Sox get one, leave two, and on the scoreboard, Rafael Santana's error. And of course, that was the key to the inning, just a routine ground ball that hit him on the left wrist and got away to start the inning. Two-nothing Sox at the end of three. This is the first inning, 20 pitches to Rice, Evans, and or Rice, Baylor, and Evans, curveballs. 14 of the 20 were curveballs, and there you see it's a Baylor and not a Evans. All breaking balls. And then he got uh, he got Baylor with the two strikes with the curveball. Two to nothing, Boston in the fourth inning. Carter, Strawberry, and Knight. Carter grounded out in the first inning to make the last out and leave Tuffle at third. Fastball. He didn't have much of a swing at all on the fastball in the first inning. It was down and away. It was a very tentative prod, and he just kind of rolled it over to Marty Barrett. that they gave him such a good fastball to hit. He'll try to pull everything, Gary Will, Carter. And watch where he lays this one. Hirsch lays it right on an outside corner. I'll tell you, that's tough to hit. And at the knees, strike three call. He had to be guessing to take that fastball. He's looking for something he didn't get. That's what Carter's looking at. Look at the, the way Hurst just kind of keeps his eye on that target. Fastball. Boy, he gets that left leg up high, doesn't he? And leaves it there a while. Yeah, line drive will pick him off. It might be how he suffered that groin injury back in May, the way he twists that torso. All right, here's Strawberry, grounded out in the second inning. Fastball for a strike. Strawberry rolled to Buckner in the second inning, and again the right side of the infield very deep on the corner. So Hurst now is really in rhythm. Everything is 
throwing it right on the edge and he's mixing them up. You could almost put that to music get the ball and throw get the ball and throw and when you're rolling you really feel that. So Strawberry trying to break the rhythm and stop the music he backs out. Good idea. Hit. So Strawberry gets a slow curve with one out and bangs it up the middle, and that'll bring up Ray Knight. So that means Strawberry, who had been in a terrific slump, has three hits in his last five at bats. Ray Knight hit the ball pretty hard in the second inning, but right at Dwight Evans in right field. Ray 0 for 1. He was the Mets most productive hitter against left hand pitching. He hit over 370 against left handers. On deck Kevin Mitchell. Out of third, trickling over to the Mets dugout, and the count 0 and 1. And the ubiquitous Ron Darling is there to grab it. They just got some votes for the All Star game. Sure. Ray Knight and his home run. His first home run of the year came against a left hander, Steve Carlton. That was a good shot of Knight. You saw him just kind of staring down at the ground. He, he's already positioned. You can bet he was thinking about what the pitch is coming up here. How did he do that? We spotted that tip off Strawberry digging in with his left foot. Whoop, almost threw it away. Buckner has no mobility at all over there, so if Hurst makes a throw off line, it's a problem. There's a line drive that short hop by Boggs, and they get the double play. Five, four, three as he short hops. The sinking line drive. And good call by Jim Evans. No run. One hit, nobody left. And at the end of three and a half, the Red Sox two and the Mets nothing. Here's that double play once again. See, Evans calls it safe, and Strawberry was really hung up. He thought the ball was going to be caught, so he's out of the play either way. When he trapped the ball, he's in no man's land. They catch the ball, he's in no man's land. Two to nothing, Red Sox. As we go to the fourth inning, Dave Henderson, who had that questionable triple in the second inning when the ball got between Strawberry under his glove, and then Dykstra fell down, and he was cashed in on Owen fly ball. Breeze blowing out to right, and you get the feeling the temperature is dropping considerably. We had a, a light rain shower, but it's getting cool now. One ball, no strikes. Good change. One and one. Looks like Henderson wanted to pull the trigger, and his body wouldn't let him. He's got so much of that body, <laughs> it's hard to get them all together. Kibler, the second base umpire, retrieving something out in shallow left field. Boy, it is hand blowing time now. One and one. Mm. He's 
given Henderson everything he has a great straight change and now the curveball in the count one and two. If Gooden had any kind of fielding back of him it would be no score tonight. But the Sox lead they cashed it in two nothing fourth inning. And a half swing and he's done. Strikeout number two for Gooden. One out in the fourth and Spike Owen coming up. When you watch a pitcher blowing his hands if you're wondering what he's trying to do he's trying to get some moisture because that ball when it gets a cool chilly like it is tonight it's really slick and sometimes he just can't get the feel of the seams and, and it just slips it's as simple as all that. Spike on in a big role in the second inning fulfilled it by lifting the fly ball to left deep enough to get Henderson home he takes a strike. Dwight Gooden was the fifth man in the 1982 draft. A lot has been made of that because of the men drafted in front of him. Well, the man drafted right after him was Spike Owen. He was the number six man. There's the list. Augie Schmidt, a shortstop. Jimmy Jones, a pitcher. Brian Okers, a pitcher. Then Gooden, some kind of pitcher. Then Spike Owen. That was some draft. Some selection. One ball, one strike. Now back. Roger Clemens sitting with Al Nipper in the dark of the dugout. He'll go in game six against Bobby Ojeda. One and two. Little dribbler foul. Hit something and started to come back, but it stayed out there. Owen started to quit on it, and then he realized that thing could come back in the chalk. Boy, that's when you really should run him out. And I tell you, I learned that the hard way. You were broadcasting that game that day in St. Louis. I stood at home plate and played spectator. Your uh, mistakes are so few, I forget them. <laughs> oh. <laughs> then you hit something about to come in, and Hernandez, watch, watch Hernandez. He'll let it roll all the way. Now it's an official foul ball. That was really nice. Man. What'd you do? I don't remember. Oh, I tapped that ball in front of home plate. Stood and there. Stood there and watched it. Can't be tagged the guy coming in. And he said, oh, Joe, you're here. Let me tag you. Get a double play. <laughs> One and two. Two and two, this fight. It's funny. Believe it or not, I got traded two days after that. What a coincidence. Mm -hmm. Yeah. There's nothing personal. Wade Boggs on deck. of a pitcher who is uncomfortable. I mean he is blowing on his hand constantly and it looks like he is feeling the effects of the evening. He can't seem to get the right grip on that ball with certain baseballs that have been thrown to him. Of course he comes from Tampa now. Mm -hmm. He's Florida. This is all new to him. Two strikes. Fastball. That's all for Spike. However, for Gooden, that strikeout comes at the wrong time. He couldn't get Spike when the runner was at third. Three strikeouts for Gooden, and the batter now is Wade Boggs. Boggs hit back to Gooden and grounded out to Hernandez. 0 for 2. And of course, you're looking at the Major League's leading hitter. 0 for 2 tonight. 0 for 5 last night. And he is now 0 for his last eight at bats. Pretty good 
tip off on him though, Ben. 0 for 8, but it has not affected his fielding. He doesn't take that the last time at bat out on the field. He has company too in the last few years as far as batting champs in the World Series. In 84, Tony Gwynn hit 263. In 85, Willie McGee hit 259. And Wade struggling. He never had a batting champ in the World Series in the 70s. And there's a base hit. So Boggs breaks the string with a solid single up the middle. And with two out, the batter will be Marty Barrett. Marty Barrett. Barrett walked in the first inning, grounded out in the third. And Hernandez already is talking to Tuffle to move on over some more. He is directing it. He is the general. He sets the defense. He's looking to see where Tuffle is. He wants him to move over because Barrett hits this way. And he's going to have to hold Wade Boggs on. He's still not happy. He wants him to come over some more. And Tuffle says, I am. We were talking before about the Mets lack of defense and that has hurt Gooden and of course Barrett in the first inning if he had not been picked off the Sox would have scored Santana of course his error contributing in the third inning the pickoff of Barrett stifled the Red Sox in the first inning one ball no strike two down fourth inning two nothing Boston on deck Bill Buckner. Buckner's legs, he, you'd think he'd just come out on the field. In this cold weather, that's going to add to his problems and his miseries. He works so hard before the game. He takes a couple steps, sounds like he's cracking walnuts. One ball and one strike. The count to Marty Barrett. And got the inside corner. That's quite a pitch. One and two. Just watching the defense. Tuffle is busy because he's got to let Hernandez know and he's letting Santana know with the uh, open mouth and closed mouth sign. He's getting the signs from Carter and he's flashing them to both. Word sign to Hernandez. One and two. Fastball hit by the mound behind second by Tuffle and Santana. Way to third. Boggs is in there. For Marty Barrett, he moves Boggs over to third. And this is a big moment for Marty Barrett. You can see him draw his arms in, hit it up the middle. He just does get by both Santana and Tuffle and Boggs. Really made a good base running play. Once it got by second base, he hit it for third pretty much on his own. For Marty Barrett, his 19th hit in the postseason. Tying Thurman Munson's record back in 1978. So Barrett, a solid ball player as Boggs takes off and hits the runway. Did you see him look at the outfield when he was rounding second base? Uh, on a play like that, the play's in front of you. You make up your own mind, and he did. So two strikeouts and then two singles up the middle. And here's Buckner, who was singled and was aboard on the arrow by Santana. Ball one. Two nothing Boston. Trying to open it some more.
good and wait. And White just blown on his hand. Two and oh. Followed by Mookie Wilson and then Rafael Santana. Top of the fifth inning, two to nothing, Boston. Hit off the end of the bat, a dunker to right for a base hit for Mitchell. Kevin way out in front of it and cued it into right field. Then we were talking about the pitches made by Gooden, 82, and in four innings, Hurst with that one has made 64. So it shows you quite a difference. Big difference. And a difference on the scoreboard, 2-0 Boston as Mookie Wilson comes up. Mookie struck out in the third inning. Sox scored in the second inning. Henderson tripled, and Owen picked him up with a fly ball. And Boston won more on the error by Santana, and eventually a base hit by Evans. Split finger job, the bottom coming out of that. 0 and 1 to count to Mookie. Bruce Hurst, 20 years, 28 years old, out of St. George, Utah, with four shutouts here this year. One ball, one strike. Mookie checking Buddy Harrelson at third to see if there might be a play on. Mitchell held on by Buckner. Harrelson wandering around down there. There are two men again out of the Mets dugout in the area of the on deck circle. You have Santana, the next hitter, and Len Dykstra. Remember, they sent Tuffle back earlier in the third. That's it to the hole. Base hit to right field. Mitchell will look at second. He will hold. They know that Evans has the best arm in the outfield. So the tying runs are aboard with nobody out. Santana and Dykstra coming up. Santana, he's walking right towards uh, Buddy Harrelson. He's in the where they hit fungos looking right at him. One of the oldest expressions in baseball, you play to win on the road and you play to tie at home, meaning on the road you would have your hitter hitting in this spot, and at home you'd have him playing sacrifice to get the runners in scoring position to tie it up. 
However, you throw that book out the window, especially oh, yeah. in the World Series. I would look for fun all the way there. Santana, by the way, has only sacrificed once this year. Look at Buckner. Mm -hmm. He needs a head start, and the bunt fouled away. And Gedman kind of stepped on Santana. He did. Rich Gedman whirled around and caught Santana a little bit on the foot, the right foot. Instinctively behind the plate, when that ball hits that bat, you break forward, and he'll kind of move forward and watch now. Right, oh, he's looking for the ball. Ouch. Right there, got it. He didn't break at all. He's looking for the ball and stepped right on his foot. <laughs> 0 and 1, the count to Raphael. Second and third with Lenny Dykstra coming up. That was a, almost a base hit. I'm telling you, that was a great bunt. He gets it past the pitcher, and Wade Boggs has to barehand that ball, and it's a tremendous play by Boggs to get to Santana. That was a beautiful bunt. So second and third, right. one out, and Len Dykstra the batter, and it's hand blowing time for Bruce Hurst. Two runs, six hits for Boston. No runs, five hits for the Mets. Dykstra grounded out and singled. Having a big series. So the time runs are out there. Wilson at second, Mitchell at third. One out, top of the fifth. Stayed up, ball one. I would think it's particularly tough to get that curveball breaking. That ball is slick, and that's the problem. That's why you see all that blowing in the hands. One and all. It is really swirling too. You can see Dykstra may have gotten something in his eye. He did. Second and third, Boggs up inside the bag at third. And that's a big rainbow. Dykstra gesturing, he thought it was high. And Ed Montague gestures back to him that it dipped into the zone. One and one. It's a big breaking curveball. Now Dykstra's not sure of it, and he turns and he'll ask about it. I thought that ball was high. Was it high? No, says Montague. One and one. Fastball, and he fouled it away. And Dykstra thought he had his pitch. He was looking fastball and angrily kicked to the dirt. Well, the runner's holding at second and third, one and two. Outside of plane missing it, I guess to get the ball you're looking for and fouling it off is just as frustrating. <laughs> for the good hitter it is. Of course, a kid like Dykstra, he's almost like Burleson, you know, bearing down. I mean, he doesn't do what he thinks he should do. He's mad at himself. One and two to Lenny. But he's reacting like the professional that he is. Oh, well, borderline fastball somewhere up around the letter. Look, look at that expression on his face. He saw it all the way. He just didn't get it. Hurst was much better. And he also tried to uppercut it, I guess, thinking about trying to at least hit a fly ball. And he'd he ever come up empty. So with two down in second and third, Tim Tuffle doubled to right center, flied to left. He has three hits against Hurst in the series. You measure a pitcher by what does he do with the man at third base and less than two outs. And Hurst just gave you a pretty good answer. In there. Backman 
Hoffman, the man he replaced, has to stay in the dugout and hang in there. And you see what he's doing? Keeping his hands warm in yeah. case he has to play. 1-1. One, one. Slow curve. Strike two. You know, Ben, there are statistics that tell you a story like quality starts and the rest of run run average. But when you see a guy do what this guy's doing right now, here's a slow curveball. And you'll see the rotation of it. Drop right in for a strike. And listen to this crowd now. of the Secretary of State George Schultz taking in tonight's game. Jim Rice, Don Baylor, and Dwight Evans coming up in the bottom of the fifth inning. Rice, an infield single and walk, one for one. That was a fairly lengthy top of the fifth inning. Well, you wonder about Gooden stiffening up in the cool of the evening. Rice, meanwhile, waiting to get his licks in leading on. And good and behind 2 and 0. Good Jim Rice now. He missed with two fastballs. What would you be sitting on? <laughs> He's well, got he was him. very effective with the curveballs to Baylor. Well, if he throws him a curveball, I got to believe he'll take it for a strike. 2 and 0. Fastball and he went after it. He couldn't lay off it. He's out of the strike zone and the count two and one. He had made up his mind that he was going to go on a fastball and it was a high. You can see it now. Look at him bear down and watch those eyes open up. That high fastball, tough to lay off of, and he knew it. Look at that. It was painful. And that's it late and foul down the right field line out of play. I was just thinking at that look of anguish on the face of Jim Rice and out in center field Lenny Dykes was standing there saying yeah tell me about it. Remember that high fastball he swung out and missed leaving runners at second and third. Two and two. is on his way to third and strawberry throw not in time a wind blown triple that was almost a home run you could really see it tail off to the right almost like in golf it would be a slice it's a high towering drive the wind gets it it would be drifting away anyhow but the wind really takes it away from Dykstra and it's just a foot or so from a home run. You see it hit the top and, and the, almost the uh, frustration in that bullpen. And Strawberry, by the time he gets up with a three base hit, and now Hernandez is playing him, but everybody else is back. Baylor, Evans, and Gedman trying to pick him up. 2 nothing Boston in the fifth inning. In the dirt, a good save by Carter. It was very close to a home run, and you can see how close. Look at that. Oh. It's another one of those angles, Vin, in this ballpark. You just don't know which way it's going to come back. It's like being inside a pinball machine. Exactly. One ball and no strikes to Don Baylor, hit by a pitch in the first inning, and struck out in the third. It's been curveballs that Gooden has been using to get Baylor. One and all. And that's looped in the right field. Base hit and the run. Oh. 
tried to jam him with the fastball. because he got jammed on that pitch. He just fisted it over there. That's what he's doing. He's sticking a needle in Baylor. Three nothing Boston on eight hits. And the batter is Dwight Evans fly to left single to center. And the bunt foul on one. Playing so deep Knight is back and Hernandez way wide of first base. Rice is really having some fun with the Baylor because Gooden did throw a good fastball. He did jam him, but as strong as he is, he's on right on top of that plate, and he just plunked one into right field. So a long windbone triple by Jim Rice, a bloop single to right by Baylor, and the Sox pick up another. And Sid Fernandez, the left-hander throwing in the Mets bullpen. Talking to plate umpire Ed Montague. The balloon over there in center field is bouncing around, very distracted. Yeah. That's what it is, or a beach ball. There it is. There's extra enthusiasm here at Fenway Park. Not only the importance of the game, it's game five. Fall is here and winter is just around the corner, and it is the last game of the year to be played at historic Fenway for 1986. And the folks who are here are going to get the most out of it. On one to Evans, Baylor at first, nobody out, three nothing Boston, fifth inning. High foul, out of play. It's kind of a cat and mouse game that Baylor and Hernandez are playing. Hernandez is playing so wide, and he gets right behind Baylor, and when Baylor kind of sees that he tries to screen Hernandez and they were kind of dancing back there. You saw the 91 pitches that Gooden has made. Now remember at 21 he is pitching on three days rest for the first time in his career. The last time he pitched he went five innings and gave up 90 pitches. Oh and two. Watch those two over there. Look where Baylor is right in front of him. Two. On deck, Rich Gedman. So the Sox certainly has the momentum. After all, the Mets had a golden opportunity, second and third, and one out in the fifth, and came up empty. They left Tuffle at third in the first inning. Boston recovered after a bases loaded failure in the first inning to get a run in the second, a run in the third, and another here in the fifth. The wind again swirling, and this time getting Evans. Fastball, a little chin music, and the count two and two. You have to pitch inside this ballpark to keep him honest, and Dewey, he just kind of closes his eyes and said, Oh, I hope I got out of the way in time, and he did. Directly behind him. Two and two to Dwight Evans. There goes Baylor, and it's fouled away. So they put a play on two and two, and Evans fouled it off. He's a big man, but he is really considered the best Red Sox base runner. 
I'll tell you, Hernandez way wide, so I guess they're going to take advantage of that. And he had a tremendous jump, of course. Red Sox do not play that kind of baseball. Ooh, cat and mouse once again, and Baylor just takes off. I just wonder if he went on his own, Vin. Well, it's the old story. If you're going to give me something, I'll take it. Take it. They're not holding him on. Because they play station to station, the Red Sox, and wait for the three run homer. Two and two to Dwight Evans. Breaking ball back into the seats. You can bet they are counting pitches in the Mets dugout. John McNamara counting runs in the Red Sox dugout. And just because it is so important, in 12 starts, his average pitches were 124. He's pretty close to that right now. 95. And we're only in the bottom of the fifth inning. So it doesn't figure he's going to make it. Admittedly, it was 10 years ago, but when we said Baylor is acknowledged as one of the better runners on the Red Sox, if not the best, he once stole 52 bases for Oakland. Two and two. And Evans fouls that away. Just to contrast as far as the number of pitches now that's 96 for Gooden Hurst in the last two innings he threw 21 pitches and 19 of them for strikes. So when you talk about in command and not in command. Two balls and two strikes to Dwight Evans Gedman on deck Rice already in with a run three nothing Boston. with something in his eye. Well, you wonder if it is or whatever. He, he's having some problems. But what that does at the infield, they get up and then they get down, they get up and they get down. And it's tough to see the good play made behind the pitcher when all this is going on. Now Gooden's going to walk around a while. And the spring goes out of the infielder's legs. I mean, Knight is over there. He's taking his glove off the third base for just a minute. And that wind straightening the flag out in center field. It's really blowing out the right. Dewey pulled it too much. Remember the ball that Rice hit that was wind blown off the wall in front of the Red Sox bullpen. If Dewey Evans was paying for this commercial prime time, he would be costing him a fortune. He's been up to over six minutes. Somebody's happy about that foul ball. Two and two to Dwight. Throws high for ball three. Gooden has three strikeouts. That's all. Struck out Baylor on curveballs. Struck out Henderson on a curveball. Struck out Owen on a fastball. But he is not blowing nearly as hard now as he was the first couple of innings. The gun shows that his fastball velocity has gone down, and that was a high curveball. That is really dangerous. Three and two. So Baylor with Hernandez on the bag now for the first time. Baylor going and a ground ball to the hole base hit into left field and Baylor on his way to third and Mookie throws it back into second and still nobody out. Sid Fernandez and game six they go against Roger Clemens and the scouting report is to run on the uh, Met outfielders uh, Wilson Dykstra and Strawberry and you saw Baylor do that. So Dwight Gooden for the second time in the series leaves and we'll be back.
baseball historians will look at tonight's game and they will see that Dwight Gooden gave up at least three runs and nine hits. But if he looks at the small print the historian will also see Tuffles inability to make a play in the first inning that he should have made. Strawberry's inability to hold Henderson to a double and he didn't do it. And Santana's error on Buckner's ball. All plays contributing to Gooden's troubles. It made him work harder than he should have had to work. And his needle hit empty here in the fifth inning. So Gooden is gone. And Sid Fernandez coming in. Fernandez in the Gooden game in New York did not retire a batter and gave up three hits Gedman popped a short fly to center you have Evans at first Baylor at third a run in the bank three nothing Boston Chance to really lighten the load for Bruce Hurst. Trying to pick up Baylor at third. Got him. So Gedman can't do it. He strikes out. And the batter now will be Henderson. Fernandez can get his strikeouts. He's very deceptive. His fastball a little bit quicker than it really appears. And he just went to work on three pitches and he gets Gedman. And that's what he had to do to set up the double play. He's got a double play man up there if he can get the ground ball. That's obviously what he's thinking. Henderson had a key shot up the alley in right center. Strawberry a late jump and then couldn't cut it off. And Dave then scored on the fly ball by Owen. Last time up, he struck out on curveballs. He's a fastball hitter. So let's see what Sid Fernandez does with him. With the shot, you saw that ball behind Fernandez many times when they, as we see Baylor at third, and we got Evans at first. When they grip it across the seams, that's a high riding fastball. Tried to change up on him. Ball two, two and oh. Straight change. Doesn't necessarily mean because he's got it back there like that that that's the way it's going to be when he gets it in the glove, but that would be the grip for the high riding fastball. Henderson one for two on deck spike on who had a fly ball good enough for an RBI in the second inning three nothing Boston trying for more in the fifth inning a shot by the inside of Ray Knight and in the corner Baylor scores Evans to third in the second goes Henderson four nothing Boston. Two steps on the grass. Owen oh, hitting right handed. When he was batting left handed against Gooden, that's when he got that fly ball in the RBI. Looks like a softball defense. 1 0. Oh. In there. So the Sox, who were struggling with the bat, they had two runs and seven hits last night. 
one run and five hits the night before have come back tonight with four runs and ten hits including two triples and a double. Mike is a better hitter from this side of the plate. One and two. Mel Stottlemyre and Davey Johnson I'm sure are getting that somewhat sinking feeling. From one nothing to two nothing to four nothing and the Sox with one out not through yet. That's only part of the story. You really need asterisk and footnote. That one error is just a portion of the story. Two and two to Spike. Henderson at second, Evans at third, one out. Fouled away. Henderson and there's Evans and Owen trying to get somebody home. Renee Latchman whispering something now to Dwight Evans. Gary Carter really checking everything. Two and two. And it's punched a one hopper smothered by Tuffle. Fakes to the plate and then goes to Hernandez. Good play. Ball was in tight and really handcuffed him. And Tuffle made a fine play. See how close they are. He was just trying to get a piece of it. Owen was. And look what Tuffle's diving stop. Good play. Now you have first base open and Wade Boggs, the batter. Boggs hit back to the box, grounded out, and then singled up the middle in the fourth inning. Ball one. Marty Barrett on deck. They don't expect Boggs to pull that ball, so it looks like they'll be throwing him hard stuff because Dykstra's over in left center field. Fouled away off third, way down the line and upstairs. One ball, one strike. The Mets have been out for a long time. You take that Dewey Evans hour that we had, it really took a lot out of him. I wonder where uh, Bruce Hurst is right now, whether he's sitting in the dugout or if maybe he went up the runway back towards the, the warmth of the clubhouse. One and one. Ball two. Two and one. Question, where is Bruce Hurst? In the dugout or back in the warmth of the clubhouse? The answer in the dugout. And this has been a pretty long inning. Rice triple, Baylor singled, Evans single. That was all for Gooden. And then Gedman struck out, Henderson doubled, and Owen grounded out. He'll be pitching to Hernandez, Carter, and Strawberry in the sixth inning. Check swing and a little foul ball. This is his favorite count, two and two. Vin, they just told me that the Red Sox have been batting for over 25 minutes. We've had situation comedies that have been on our network that long. Well, I'll tell you one thing. It's not funny for Bruce Hurst. He's been pitching so well for five innings. We'll see whether this autumn chill will affect him. Could be a factor. Anderson at second, Evans at third. Two out, four nothing Boston in the fifth inning. Mookie will 
Wilson says he has it and the Sox get two and leave two on two singles a double and a triple and a big play by Tupple at the end of five four nothing Boston and Hurst goes back to work. Well two thoughts the number of pitches and how long he sat in the dugout we'll see if it has any effect on him. Keith Hernandez Gary Carter and Darrell Strawberry top of the sixth inning. The Red Sox four and the Mets nothing. Hernandez grounded out with a runner at second and flied to left with runners at first and second. Ball one missing with the curve. The wind is blowing from left center straight across to the right field foul line. At least for the moment. Ball two. Hey, he showed me something coming out on the very first pitch with the four run lead trying to get the curveball over. He's going to have to almost try to find the pitches that he had when he was uh, going so well. Two and oh. On the corner, two and one. Lead two balls, two strikes. Time is call. Unfortunately, I think a youngster got hit, and Hernandez is concerned. I tell you, ball players, reality sets in. It, but that's what scouts are for. They position you, and if the pitcher can make you hit that way, you get an easy play from a ball that appeared to be a base hit when it started out. One away. Ball one. In Hurst's game against the Mets, he went eight innings, and then Calvin Giraldi pitched the ninth, so he blanked. The Mets for eight innings in New York, and he has them by the neck for five innings tonight. So that's 13 consecutive scoreless innings for Bruce against the Mets. And Gary Carter really chased a bad ball. He's backed out of the batter's box way out there, regrouping because he knows what he did. He was ahead, one ball, no strikes, and he just chased a real bad ball. They've been pitching him outside, the outside part of the plate, off speed pitches, the fastball. They try to keep it way out there. People in New York remember that Carter finished the year with a team high 13 game hitting streak. Ground ball wide at third, didn't come up, but Bonds went down to get it and throws him out. That's a fine play because you're expecting the ball to come up, and he went right down and picked it. But he's got that glove. Watch that glove. Now he roams far to his left. That ball, you would think it would bounce up, but look where that glove is right down there. And I tell you, he works out, and it's nothing new in the World Series that he goes out there and works out before everybody else. He's been doing that all year long, and he's made himself a pretty good fielder, and he's really shown it in this World Series. Fine play by Wade Boggs, two out in the sixth. Darrell Strawberry grounded out and singled one for two. Fastball on the outside corner. So Hurst still has that control. He threw the last time. Two fastballs, got two quick strikes, and threw a curveball. Let's see what he does. Fastball, and it's fouled away. The only walk that Hurst has given up tonight thus far, he gave to Rafael Santana, the number nine hitter. Reminder local news coming up next on most of these NBC stations. See what he does with this pitch, Vin. Last time he got burned with a curveball with two strikes. Bruce Hurst. 
Rodgers can go back and sit down again and hope it takes a while before he has to pitch. That's the reaction. If you can read lips. I can read it. He was saying Chaucer. Yes. And Montague said Rabelais. Uh -huh. And then Strawberry said Balzac. I'll tell you. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Marty Barrett, one ball and no strikes. That's an old line from the music man that came to my head. Four to nothing Red Sox in the sixth. Hey, they'd appreciate that up here around Harvard. Now he starts to get a little bit excited. Look at Hernandez come running in to get the youngster out of there. Bill Robinson can't move him, but Hernandez gets him out of there. It's just total frustration. 2-0 to Marty. Walk, grounded out and singled. There's a look at ball three. That's why it was so rare to see him hit the first pitch because he's always working pitchers. And that's what you want the guys like Marty Barrett to do. Make them work. In there. Marty has had a great series. He's hit in all five games. Every time you look up, he's either on base or making a good play with the glove. Seems like every time he's up there, he's hitting the three-two pitch. If you're scouting him, you say, "Hey, he's not afraid to hit with two strikes." What a great contributor he was to the Red Sox all year. He only missed three games. Marty Barrett. High pop fly around the coming in is Keith Hernandez because the wind is going to almost bring it to him. One away. Looking ahead, when the Mets come up in the seventh, they'll have Ray Knight, Kevin Mitchell, and Mookie Wilson. But meanwhile, Buckner and Rice have to hit here in the sixth. Buckner singled in the first inning, was aboard on a big error by Rafael Santana, and eventually scored on a single by Dwight Evans, and grounded out in the fourth inning with runners at first and third, and two out. Sid Fernandez picking up the pieces for Dwight Gooden, who went four innings plus, gave up four runs and nine hits, and Baylor working on that bat. He broke his last bat, remember, on that base hit to right. Drive to left, going back on the ball is Mookie in front of the scoreboard to make the play. Two down. Once again, friends, we remind you we'll be selecting the NBC Miller Lite Player of the Game at the conclusion of this ball game. Well, here's Rice. Infield single in the first inning, walked in the third, a windblown triple that was almost a home run into the Sox bullpen in the fifth. Something down in the right field corner. And it's a beach ball. <laughs> Running for a touchdown with a beach ball. Joe Brinkman. Joe Brinkman. Four nothing Boston, bottom of the sixth, two out. John McNamara still a ways to go. Johnson hoping he can catch up. Big slow curveball for a strike. That was a beauty. <laughs> that took a while to get up there. Oh, if that wind would have started blowing, I think might have blown it back. 0 oh and 2. Fastball got him. So Rice goes down on strikes. Socks are done in the sixth. It's 4 0 Boston. We'll be back after these messages from your local station. Seventh inning, Boston four runs, 10 hits. The Mets, no runs, five hits. They've been mesmerized by Bruce Hurst for the second time. He has a string of 14 consecutive scoreless innings against him, and he set sails in the seventh. Ball one to Ray Knight. And Knight then, flied to right, hit into a double play. Then with that pitch, 27 of his last 33 pitches have been for strikes. 
1 and 0. Fastball a night late, but it's going to be a tough play for Buckner, especially, and the ball lands fair. Picked up by Barrett and holding on. Good play by Ray Knight. As soon as Barrett one handed the hopper, he held on. And Gedman was right there at the bag to draw a throw. Watch Buckner give it a good effort. He's not going to get it. And Ray Knight thinks he might have a double, but when he sees Marty Barrett come up with the ball, he stops. And as you pointed out, Gedman's down the line, and that's how you get that put out, Vin, at first base. Look at Gedman sneaking behind the runner. The heads up play by Getty just in case. But also, Bill Robinson, I think, would have almost blocked and tackled Ray Knight if he tried to go on to second. He came right to the bag to make sure he would stop. All right, Kevin Mitchell robbed of a hit by Boggs and single to right in the fifth inning and drills one into the left field corner, hooking foul. The first goes night. You might remember in the fifth inning it was Mitchell who led off with the single to right. Then Wilson singled and Santana sacrificed and the Mets trailing only two to nothing at the time runs at second and third and maybe the biggest pitch of the night a borderline fastball and Dykstra swung and missed for strike three. Tuffle grounded out and that was that. They got him. Got him. It dropped the ball. They had him dead to rights. He was walking off the bag and kind of like a walk in the park. And Hurst just nonchalantly flipped it over. What a move he puts on. Look at now. Look at night. Now there it is. That's a pretty good move. Knight doesn't expect it at all. Hands on hips and whoops. Look at here. Still 4 0 Boston, and the Mets trying to regroup in the seventh inning. Mitchell followed by Wilson. Good fastball. So he still has plenty left in the tank here in the seventh inning. You know, the odd thing about that pickoff, too, Vin, is uh, Buckner's playing behind Knight. He just kind of walked in there like they were visiting. They were both walking. Yeah. Never trust another ball player. Especially Buckner, who's probably telling him a story at the yeah. same time. Ball one. one and two to Kevin Mitchell. Watch where it is. If he hits it, he beats it right into the ground. Five strikeouts for Bruce Hurst and the batter, Mookie Wilson. He struck out in the third inning, singled a right in the fifth, one for two, and Kevin Mitchell sadder but wiser in the dugout. Fastball and a towering wind blow. He surrounded that ball, that crosswind. You could see he had a little bit of problem with it. It's swirling. Well, they brought it to him, so with two down, the batter will be Rafael Santana and Bruce Hurst with the ball game firmly in his grasp here in the seventh inning, leading 4 0 and showing no signs of letting up. Santana walked and sacrificed. That's the closest the Mets have been to the game in the fifth inning. Second and third, trailing two nothing. Now it's four nothing. And that's a windblown fly ball. Barrett falling. That's it. So Ray Knight opens up with a single and they leave him. And at the end of six and a half, Sox four, Mets nothing. Santana had just bunted men over the second and third. Here is that the fifth inning Dykstra against Hurst. Curveball is high. Curveball. It's a strike. 
Fastball is fouled off. One ball, two strikes. Fastball high and in, and he gets him. What a piece of pitching. And that's the closest the Mets have been tonight. Slow curveball to Baylor for a strike. Going one. Baylor hit by a pitch in the first inning, struck out in the third, and then a broken bat single to right to cash in Jim Rice in the fifth. Slow curve. One and one. In all three of his plate appearances tonight, Baylor has come up with runners in scoring positions, which indeed is an ideal situation for the DH. One and one. Fastball. Now we go to New York and he becomes as you call him the designated sitter. Yep. And the specter of Roger Clemens looms larger and larger as the outs go by here in Fenway. One and two. Change hit down the line. Out of here. And that was uh, McNamara's master plan. If there was going to be that big game he wanted his big guy. That's right. They second guess John in some quarters saying he should have tried to really get ahead instead of risking being tied. But as usual very calm and easy he said hey I've got my best three well rested and Baylor strikes out. Meanwhile Roger Clemens and that's Al Nipper with the towel around his neck. Clemens and Nipper like to run before games and one time this year they ran before a game came in and 15 minutes before the game they were taking a shower laughing and scratching McNamara threw a laundry cart into the shower stall. I mean once in a while John will get ticked off. That's that controlled aggression that, that Gil Hodges uh, you know Gil would look at you and he could melt you just by looking at you because the guy doesn't say a lot that don't ever take that as a sign of weakness. Here's Evans fly to left single twice two for three. Slow curve and a number up on third. They better let it roll and it goes foul. They didn't have a play otherwise. The only chance that had if it would have been hit on that grass and that grass would grab and hold it in but you can see it is kind of beveled out. Ball club doesn't have a whole lot of speed now if it had a whole lot of speed that line could be painted with an extra coat they could tilt that in a little bit that would have stayed fair and there are some groundskeepers who are just experts at that. Game six Roger Clemens and Bobby Ojeda at Shea Stadium in New York. There's Bobby Ojeda now. He pitched a gem here to get the Mets even last night. Oh and one to count Dwight. And there's a hopper down to Santana. He almost let the ball play him again but this time he gets Evan. Two down. You know Ben looking at Ojeda. I tell you I thought he handled himself so well because there were some there were some vicious things said I know one cartoon here had him he's going to choke up and that's a thing I always hate and I tell you he handled himself so well and, and he said I have no bittersweet hey I'm with the Mets now I enjoyed my time here it's going to be quite a battle here's Rich Gedman out in front he was guessing fastball and got it and he was still out in front of it oh and one. Interestingly enough, Gooden went four innings plus and struck out three. Fernandez has worked two and a third and struck out three. Oh and two. He got Gedman last time on three pitches. And with runners at first and third. Chased a high one around the eyes to give him four strikeouts. And so Fernandez has retired eight in a row, but it's still 4 0 Boston. The Red Sox leading the Mets 4 0 in the eighth inning. And the hopes, if this one is gone, is Bob Ojeda's next start at Shea Stadium against Roger Clemens. Dykstra fouling it to the screen. Lenny had a big at bat tonight. But no miracles. He struck out instead. That was in the fifth inning with runners at second and third. He had singled in the third and grounded out in the first. One for three. Then Tuffle, then Hernandez. Down in the Red Sox bullpen, we have now come to that time of the game. Calvin Schiraldi is loosening up 
just in case they need it. You're in a pretty good spot. You're leading 4 nothing with Hurst. You have arrested Chiraldi and looking forward to Clemens. And that's what John said all along. It hasn't just happened. It's part of his master plan. Oh, and two to Dykstra. And he uppercuts that high change. The wind is playing with it, but Owen stays with it. Good play. Tough play under the condition. And that's what the shortstop does in his ballpark. He goes out all the time. Even though Rice was playing shallow because of the wall, that wind. Uh, Rice lets up here because he sees Spike Owen taking charge, and Spike makes the play. A little tentative. I don't blame him with Rice coming from left field. Wanted to avoid the collision. Tim Tuffle, the batter, double to right center, and the Mets had a chance to get something going, but they left him at third. Then he flied to left and grounded to third with runners at second and third and two out in the fifth after Dykstra had struck out. In there again. On two. Tell you, I've heard scouts and I've heard general managers talk about. Forget the statistics. Innings pitch consistency and what do they do with men at second and third and how deep do they take the hitters. He rarely goes to a 3-2 count. And that's it down the right field line slicing away from Evans. It's got a chance. It's gone. A home run into the right field seat by Tim Tuffle. And that makes it Red Sox four Mets one. And Hurst was really disgusted with himself as he came off the mound. That ball was well hit. Make no mistake about it. The wind may have drifted it over there, but that was well hit. So Tuttle with a double to right center and a home run to right. He has four hits against Hurst in their meeting. Take another look. That wind takes it, but it's in there pretty good. It just doesn't sneak in there. So four to one in favor of Boston, and the batter is Hernandez over three. Rounded to second, fly to left, rounded to short. Right. So seven and eight, 15 and a third scoreless innings, and the bubble bursts for Hurst. He gives up his first run to New York. The largest crowd of the three games here tonight, and that figure since this is the last game of the year at Fenway. 34,010. Then we've talked about the radar gun almost all year and how effective it is and so forth and so on. If that ball doesn't move, you're in trouble. That ball Tuffle hit was the fastest pitch that Hurst made. 89 miles per hour. Ended up in the seats. 0 oh and 2. And that's going to be looped into right field for a base hit. So suddenly the Mets are trying to get their second look at the game. The first one was in the fifth inning and now maybe here in the eighth as Gary Carter comes up. John McNamara as we said is in a good position. He has Chiraldi in the pen. And here is Carter. Grounded to second. Struck out. Grounded to third. 0 for 3. As always but especially in the World Series six toughest outs. One out on the eighth. Four one Boston. They just keep pitching him away and he keeps either taking for a strike or lunging. Just keep that ball away from him. That's what they've been doing. Oh and one. Evans gives him just about all of right field. Henderson shaded to left center. So they're playing him to full. And keeping the ball away at the same time. Now working the dirt. One and one. On deck. And it is certainly a consideration with the wind blowing out to right field. Darryl Strawberry. And of course, four to one in this situation, Strawberry represents the potential tying run. That big curveball. I mean, it is a big rainbow curveball. High. Look at the road.
rotation on it. As a kid, you call that a drop. Let's see if it's fastball away. Fastball inside in case he was looking away. Here's his pitch of decision two and two. He used that to set it up because he's got it in Gary Carter's mind now. He can come back with that slow curveball or that fastball away. Two and two. One out. Fastball, and he just got a piece of it. And I think it was a split finger because that seemed to sink. Well, he was looking for the ground ball, and that, that bottom kind of dropped out of there. McNamara patiently watching. Giraldi is ready if they need him now. Fastball away, hit off the end of the stick. Fielded by Barrett to get him. And down to second base goes Keith Hernandez. So the split fingered fastball takes care of Gary Carter and he kept it outside and all Gary could do is hit it off the end of the stick. So two down a big out that takes a lot of heat on hers and it brings up Daryl Strawberry. You remember the last time up there he was called out on strikes and had some words with Montague and Hernandez had to move him away. And there's Hernandez trying to move him away. Strawberry is trying to get Hernandez home. He is one for three. Curveball. He's just not sure of that pitch. He grounded out in the second, singled in the fourth, and struck out, called out in the sixth inning. One one. Fastball. Slow curveball and the fastball, boy. He really gives a catcher the luxury. And now everybody up at Fenway, and I mean everybody. No swing. Ball one. They check with Jim Evans at third. game continues. He bought him by him. Four to one Red Sox. Top of the eighth, two out. Hernandez at second. One and two to Strawberry and Ray Knight on deck. Two and two. Just to keep him honest with that high inside fastball. Remember, he did that to Carter, two and two. That's his pitch of decision. He, he, will, he very rarely goes deep, three and two. Slow curve, popped up, off third. Boggs coming over to get it. He's got it. Hurst is three outs away from giving the Red Sox a lead three games to two. In right field, the crowd is tormenting strawberries, singing Darryl, Darryl. Strawberry has had a tough time when he struck out in the sixth inning and sensed and argued with Ed Montague, and there was Hernandez. And when he fouled out to Boggs, there was Hernandez again, trying to console, trying to keep him in the game. It's a tough time for any kid, and especially now as he stands naked under the world out there in right field, and they taunt him and they chant his name. He takes his cap off and reacts to it. It's just been a tough time. Tell you, it's a tough business. Uh, <laughs> Bruce Hurst, meanwhile, not only got the outs in the eighth inning, I believe he is finished for the night. 
He shook hands all around with all of his teammates, got a towel and a windbreaker, put it on, and left the dugout. Now, I have a feeling he might have concluded his work in the eighth. It remains to be seen, but there he goes, perhaps annoyed that he's not allowed to go nine. Meanwhile, in the eighth, Dave Henderson, ball one. And the chant continues, the taunt of Strawberry. You think maybe in Chase Stadium they'll start hollering Dwight? Well, I just hope that they. That I just hate to see that happen to a youngster with that kind of potential. Two and one. Of course, it's all part of the maturing process. Strawberry is only 24. Dave Henderson had a big night. A double and a triple struck out in the fourth inning. Sid Fernandez trying to get him. Two and two. It won't do much to Dwight Evans. He's been around in danger like water off the duck's back. They couldn't send to Jim Evans. Uh, I mean to <laughs> Jim Rice or to Dave right. Henderson. Yeah, it's kind of lonely out there in right field. Hindu two for three. Two and two the count. Strawberry. Wind blowing it. One away. Boy, they're really on his case. Oh. Well, I'll tell you what, if you don't want to live in a goldfish bowl, you better not be a big league ball player. No. Here is Owen at a scoring fly ball, struck out and grounded out. 0 for 3. And then you'll hear somebody say, Well, I don't pay much attention to that. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. I never hear the crowd. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. One ball, no strike. Pretty good fastball there, a lot of movement on it. One ball and one strike. Game six is just around the corner. Shea Stadium, Bobby Ojeda, and Roger Clemens, who must loom like the Colossus of Rhodes right now in the minds of the Mets. And come to think of it, in the minds and hearts of the Red Sox. One and one. One foul, one and two. You think about that Clemens, he's just an ordinary pitcher with a 150 mile an hour fastball. Long night for Davey Johnson. Four runs, ten hits for the Red Sox. One run, eight hits. One error and a big one caused a run for the Mets. There's Clemens waiting for his next shot. Game six. One and two. Slow curveball. So all of a sudden, Sid Fernandez, five strikeouts, and the batter will be Wade Boggs. But Fernandez has quieted the Red Sox, but he can't do anything about the scoreboard. Well, the folks at Shea never had a chance to make much noise. The folks at Fenway had their only real opportunity tonight, and they're making the most of it. The battle of the decibels will continue in game six. Wade Boggs. 0 for 2, then single to center. Last time up, fly to left. Right. They're playing Boggs to go the other way. The infield is swung around. Hernandez is almost in the hole between first and second. He's so far away from the bag. Now back. Dykstra is over in the left center. And Hernandez with the count 0 and 2. The only pitch you'll be able to pull is something slow, breaking ball. If it's a fastball, he'll go the other way. Two down in the eighth, 4 1 Red Sox. Foul back. Ray Knight, Kevin Mitchell, and Mookie Wilson are due up. 
particularly Mitchell because we're not sure whether Shiraldi will be pitching the ninth inning or Hurst. I have a feeling it will be Shiraldi. Fastball fouled away again. One time this summer, I forget who the umpire was, he said to Bob when he walked up the hit, why don't we just make the count two and two and we'll save all those baseballs because you're going to foul off about <laughs> nine of them. Well, it's 0 and 2 right now. Fly ball down the left field line. Mookie wedged in there, and the ball is back in the seats. Fernandez has retired the last 10 in a row. He came in and gave up a base hit to Henderson. He got Owen and Boggs, retired the side in the sixth, retired the side in the seventh, and he's gotten the first two in the eighth. There is Chiraldi. Warm in the bullpen. Line drive, and that hit Tuffle on the ankle. You talk about a ball eating up a second baseman. That took a bite out of Tim Tuffle's left ankle. Oh, did that hurt. That was a knuckleball. He hit the pitch was a fastball, but it went out there like a knuckleball. He's got the glove down and hit him right on the ankle. And I mean he's more embarrassed than hurt right now. But I tell you something, that thing really knuckled out there. And whew, that's all you can say to ate him up. It is just, it's got to be hurting him, but he is just embarrassed. And I tell you, that thing really knuckled out there. Wade Boggs with topspin. The good hitters do that. They hit that sinking line drive. And one minute, Tuffle thought he had a play, and the next thing, it hit him on the ankle. It will go as a base hit. It should go as yeah. a base hit. That was really a tough chance. They talk about too hot and too hard to handle. That was a perfect example. And here is Marty Barrett. And he drives it to the wall. Back goes Mookie. It's going to be off the scoreboard. Boggs will stop at third on a double by Marty Barrett. And there he is again. He keeps it going. Two outs. And the big guys are up there. Now Barrett doubles off the scoreboard. And when it hits that scoreboard, it's liable to go anyway, but Mookie once again plays it well. Santana's out there. They don't use double cutoffs because it's so shallow. But once again, Barrett right in the middle of it. Well, Bill Buckner comes up. He singled to center. It was aboard on Santana's era and scored in the third. Grounded out in the fourth. Fly to left in the sixth. Buckner again finding runners in scoring position almost every at bat it looks like he has somebody there and he's only delivered twice in like 20 scoring position situation ball one one ball and no strikes Four one Red Sox trying to open it up two out remember. Two. On deck, Jim Rice. Rice has a walk, a single, and a triple tonight. Johnson running out of time. Two balls, no strike. Fly ball curling foul down the right field line and well back into the crowd of 34,010. So John McNamara, three outs away from getting an edge, three games to two, and then he plays his ace at Shea. John still has a decision to make, although I think he's already made it concerning whether Hurst or Chiraldi pitches the ninth inning. Well, the Mets, they might be much more so in the game had they played a good defensive game. 
Little pop foul off third. Ray Knight is there. And the Sox leave runners at second and third. And the Mets are still in the game. 4 1 Boston. Tonight's game is brought to you by Ford and your Ford dealer. Have you driven a Ford lately? By Miller High Life. Miller made the American way since 1855. By Aetna, the insurance people work with the best in the business. And by the makers of Prestone 2 Antifreeze. Don't push your luck, change it with fresh Prestone. This telecast presented by authority of Major League Baseball may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of Major League Baseball. The question has been answered. Bruce Hurst, who is bundled up and appeared to be leaving the dugout, has come back. He's on the mound, and Calvin Chiraldi is at the ready in the bullpen. Ray Knight, the batter. Last five innings, 48 strikes and 10 balls for Hurst. And Dave Stapleton at first base for Bill Buckner. Ground ball to Boggs, and the Sox are two outs away. Looking for the last two outs of the 1986 season at Fenway Park. The batter is Kevin Mitchell. Robbed of a hit by Boggs, single to right, and struck out on a curveball in the seventh inning. Ball one. On deck, Mookie Wilson. Ball popped up. Now let's see. Who is it? Stapleton is calling. And the Sox are one out away. Everybody up. And some are down. tonight the only run a home run to right field by Tim Tupple Mookie has struck out singled and flied to right strike the fans with a chance to say goodbye to their ball club and New York waiting to say hello Big base 
he's hit has come from this little guy and McNamara turning now. However, the biggest moment for Dykstra tonight turned sour with runners at second and third and one out. Remember, he struck out on a high fastball. That's when the score was two nothing. Check swing on a curve right into the Mets dugout. And that's the way he started him last time was curve, curve, fastball, fastball. On one. So a two out double by Wilson, a single by Santana for a run. And Hurst now on one on Dykstra. Let's go, Bruce is the champ. And he bunched the curve foul on the count 0 2. And again, the Mets are down to their last strike. Oil can boy talking to Buckner on one side, Nipper on the other. He would be the seven game pitcher against Ron Darling, whom you just saw, if there is a seven game. The pattern followed then. Two curveballs, although Dykes didn't bunt the last time, then he went to the fastball, Hurst did. Let's see what happens. Oh, and two. Hurst is the winner. The Red Sox win it 4 2. They now have a three games to two advantage. And game six, Roger Clemens and Bobby Ojeda will be back to the party after this.